being able to label food chains and food webs is a very important skill. To label this first food chain, we'll start by placing a P over our producer. Then we'll place a 1 over our primary consumer, a 2 over our secondary consumer, and a 3 over our tertiary consumer. So once I place my P over my producer, I'm basically just counting. Now while we often think of plants as producers, it's very important that you can recognize algae and phytoplankton as being aquatic producers. And then you can just label 1, 2, 3, and 4 for our primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and quaternary consumer. And finally, one very important thing for you to understand is that the sun, while a very important source of solar energy, is not a source of chemical energy, and so it's not considered a trophic level. Our phytoplankton are our producers here, and we have primary consumers and secondary consumers. Labeling food webs is done in the same way, we just have more to label. So in this first food web, I'll start by putting a P next to my grass, and then everything that eats the grass is a primary consumer. And then since crickets are a primary consumer, everything that eats the crickets is a secondary consumer. And since the hawks eat a secondary consumer, that makes them a tertiary consumer. Notice that the mouse ended up being both a primary and a secondary consumer. That's because the mouse is an omnivore. It eats grass and crickets. And that's completely okay for something to get more than one trophic level assigned to it in a food web. Now when you're answering food web questions, you may only need to know about a specific organism. So in the second food web, let's just see what the birds are. So we'll start by putting a P over the corn. And then if I go up this way, that makes the moths a primary consumer. And it makes the birds a secondary consumer. But notice that the birds also just eat corn directly. That makes them a primary consumer. And I can also go up this way through crickets. The crickets are primary, but notice that also makes the birds a secondary consumer. So here I see that the birds are primary and secondary consumers because they eat moths, corn, and crickets. And it's also important that you understand that you don't just label from the bottom up, you start at the producer, and in this case, the producer is at the top, and there's no rule against that. So phytoplankton are our aquatic producer here. Since the krill eat the phytoplankton, the krill are our primary consumers. Everything that eats the krill would be a secondary consumer. And sea turtles are a tertiary consumer because they eat that secondary consumer. Everything here that eats the herring is tertiary. And that makes the sharks a quaternary consumer. So let's go through a couple of practice problems just to make sure you understand. The terrestrial food web shown above describes many of the different food chains that are present in this ecosystem. And insectivorous birds are part of several of these food chains. According to this food web, insectivorous birds would best be classified as... So first, let's figure out what we're looking for here. I need to know about insectivorous birds. So I'm going to identify all the different trophic levels that that organism is a part of. So in this food web, the plants, which go all the way across the bottom here, are my producers. Go up to herbivorous insects, and those are my primary consumers. And then I can go over to the spiders, which would be secondary, and up to the insectivorous birds, which would be tertiary. But notice that there's also an arrow pointing directly from the herbivorous insects to the insectivorous birds. Since they eat a primary consumer, that also makes them secondary consumers. You can also go one other way 
If you go to the right here, since predaceous insects eat primary consumers, they're secondary consumers, and insectivorous birds eat those, but that would also make them tertiary consumers. And those are all of the arrows pointing toward the insectivorous birds, meaning that's all they eat. Notice they don't eat plants. So since they don't eat plants, they can't be primary consumers, and A cannot be correct. They aren't just secondary consumers. We've established that they're both secondary and tertiary, and D is also incorrect. So I can clearly see by labeling this food web that C is the correct answer. This next question asks which of the following lists only organisms that are secondary consumers in this food web. So going through the answer choices, I'll start with A. And mountain lion is first, so grass would be my producer. If I go this way, deer are primary consumers, and mountain lion are secondary consumers. Okay, now looking at the mouse. Well, here we have a problem. In this ecosystem, the mouse eats grass, making them primary consumers. And that's all the mouse eats, so that is not correct. Okay, let's look at the second answer choice. So start again with grass as my producers. And then I go up to rabbits, and they're primary consumers because they eat grass. Notice that the deer are also primary consumers, the crickets are also primary consumers, and the mouse, once again, is a primary consumer. So just because these are all in the same trophic level, sometimes that can be misleading, but they're all primary consumers, and I'm looking for secondary consumers, so this is a very wrong answer. Answer choice C. So I start with P on my producer, and go up to the snake, so I'll go this way through the rabbit. Rabbit is primary, snake is secondary. Now looking at the frog, so I'll go this way. Crickets are primary, which makes frogs secondary, so this is looking good. Going to the mountain lion, well, deer are primary, that would make mountain lions secondary. And then to the hawks, I'll go this way. Mouse are primary, and hawks are secondary. Notice they'd also be secondary if I went from the rabbits. So I can see here that the snakes, the frogs, the mountain lions, and the hawks are all secondary consumers, which is what I was looking for. So it looks like C might be my right answer. But we always want to check all of our answer choices to make sure we didn't make a mistake. So let's go through D real quickly. I see I've got P on my grass there because it's my producer. Go into hawk. Rabbit would be one. Hawk would be two. Into mountain lion. Deer would be primary, making mountain lion secondary. And deer, uh-oh. There you go. Deer is a primary consumer, making that an incorrect answer. So now I can clearly see that answer choice C is the correct answer to this question. And our last example asks, which of the following are missing from this food web? Well, I've got omnivores, predators, decomposers, and producers. So let's go through and see if we can find all but one of these. So if you look at the mouse, you'll see that the mouse is eating grass and crickets. That makes him both a primary and secondary consumer and an omnivore. So since there's an omnivore in this food web, A is not correct. B asks for predators. Well, we've got a lot of predators. Notice that the mountain lion is a predator of deer and rabbits. The snake is a predator of mice. And the hawk is a predator of snakes, frogs, and mice. So we've got lots of predators. So B, B is not correct. C asks for decomposers. Now, decomposers in most ecosystems are either bacteria or fungi. And I don't see any of those in this food web. So that looks like it could be the right answer, but we always want to go through all of our answer choices. And D is producers. 
and the grasses and the trees, they would be producers. So that is not the correct answer because they're not missing, meaning that decomposers, those bacteria and fungi, are what's missing from this food web.